The time for minor skirmishes is over. We now prepare for war. The villain Longshanks is poised to cross the River Forth and threaten the town of Stirling with a force of men-at-arms, heavy cavalry, and a multitude of archers. Our newly forged army marches southward to establish our own base and attack the English before they can ready their troops. The time has come to take the offensive. The English have a fort near the town of Stirling. If we can defeat the English here, they may think twice about their invasion of Scotland. To win, destroy the English tower to the west. Before we attack the English to the west, we need to build up our forces. Have your villagers start gathering food and wood. Keep making villagers at your town centre until you have ten. The more villagers you have, the faster your resources will come in. Scout cavalry are poor fighters, but they can see a great distance. You can use your scout cavalry to explore the rest of the map and find the English. You can specify a location for new units to gather by setting a gather point. For villagers, click the town centre and click the set gather point button. You can gain more food by building fishing ships. To create fishing ships, have your villagers build a dock in the water to the south. Kid, tell You've found some sheep. Sheep are a good source of food. So send them back to your town centre and assign a villager to gather food Ta, from Ta. Bit fear. Kid, cheer the guy, cheer the guy. Kid, bit fear. The hill with the dead tree protects the only access to your town. It would be a good idea to build a watchtower on this hill once you advance to the feudal age. Now click the dock and build a fishing ship. To fish, click a fishing ship and right click on a leaping fish. The fishing ship will collect fish and automatically return them to the dock. Fishing ships are also useful for exploring. Build a barracks and five militia to defend your villagers and explore the map. Villagers can also build farms. Build four farms near your mill when your farm is bushing. Each farm needs only one villager working on it. Shh. 
Kid. Probably get. Who in it? You're close to the English base. Better not knock down this wall until you have an army of about 12 soldiers. The English are coming to attack. To protect your villagers, you can use the town bell to garrison them in your town center. Click your town center, then click town bell. Kid. Villagers in your town center, ring the town bell again to send them back to work. Once you have gathered 500 food, advance to the feudal age at your town center. If you are low on food, build some additional farms. Now that you have reached the feudal age, concentrate on making some soldiers to fight the enemy. You will need at least 12. Remember, you can upgrade your militia to men at arms at the barracks. You should always upgrade soldiers when you can afford them. Oh, 
kid. Cheer the gap. Ho ho. Ho ho. Kid. Far up noka. Ho ho. Rob with ya. Kia. Car. Rob with ya. Rob with ya. It's fear. Rob with ya. Nigga. Remember to upgrade weapons and armor at the blacksmith. You do have a blacksmith, don't you? Now you have a large enough force to attack the English base. Charge. Keep your villagers working just in case you suffer casualties and need to make more troops. Beat fear, beat fear. For your home. Rob, Rob, Wiggy, Rob, Wiggy. Rob, Wiggy, Rob, Wiggy, Rob, Wiggy. Get home. Bargain it, get home. Home. Get home. Have a long plan. Bit fear, 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 Soldiers. Now, destroy that tower and our victory will be complete. Battle of Stirling is sure to end in victory for the Scots. Now that you know how to build up, advance through the ages and find and fight your enemies. You have all the basic skills you need to play a random map game. The most common type of game in Age of Empires 2. Stirling was our first great victory. Even as we held the coastline, word arrived that Stirling Bridge had been held by a force of Scots led by the mythical knight of whom so many have spoken. Now we know his name. Sir William Wallace, the bane of the English. Edward Longshanks names Wallace a traitor and a criminal. Sir William replies he cannot be a traitor for he never swore fealty to an English king. With Wallace leading our armies, the men fight with renewed vigor. Perhaps the tide of our misfortunes is about to turn.